Hey, what is going on everybody? It's Nothing But Skills here. And in today's video, we are going to be talking about my favorite two skill builds to run while playing the Division Two. And these are skill damage focus builds. So they're gonna be great for farming, farming those missions, farming those control points, and just getting through content pretty easy because most of the damage, most of the work is done by your skill builds. So in this video, we'll have two different builds. So if you wanna watch one build, or you can fast forward to the second build. So let's dive into the first one. So if we get into the build itself, you're gonna see I'm running five yellows, one red, and then we actually have six reds and then nine red attributes. So pretty, um, not pretty standard skill build because you know usually everybody runs all skill builds. And you can see my watch level is only 386. One thing to keep in mind, I am running the technician class. So that allows me to hit skill tier six without having to stack all of my um, gear pieces to yellow, right? So I'm, allow I'm, a I'm allowing myself to add some reds into the build. So let's get into it. So let's talk about the weapon. I am using the Harmony. Now this is the new named high-end rifle. And if you look at my total damage, look, 173,000 RPM 350 round mag. It has rifle damage, critical hit damage, not even maxed out. So this build could still hit a lot harder, right? It does have 9% damage to targets out of cover. I did add that on there, but you can roll whatever you want. And then it has perfectly in sync. And this is what's crazy about this weapon that I'm glad that they brought. Hitting an enemy grants 20% skill damage for 5 seconds. Using a skill or damaging an enemy with a skill grants 20% weapon damage for 5 seconds. And then damaging increases if you have both buffs active. So it's doubled, right? So that means 40% extra skill damage and 40% extra weapon damage for 5 seconds. That's someone's dream. If you're a skilled player and you can have a, a weapon like this with talent like this, you're loving it. Now, we are running a 20 round mag on here and then for everything else, it's really up to you. I do like running that um, 3.4 scope. It gives you critical hit chance because you can zoom in, zoom out with it. Um, I do run stability on the muzzle for that 20% stability. For the under barrel, it's up to you. If you wanna have some critical hit chance, if you wanna have reload speed, it doesn't really matter. That I'll leave that up to you. So you can't stack the critical hit chance. I do have it on the 3.4 scope. That gives you critical hit chance, but I really like it because of the scope itself. But it, that's up to you. For the secondary, the Bullet King, this is just for enemies when they rush you. You can run any weapon here. The Sweet Dreams also works really good with it for when those purples run towards you and say you're in cover, you can just melee them and then knock them out. Now, I do run um, the Technician pistol this is going to give you perfect spike headshots grant 25 percent skill damage for 15 seconds now that's just my backup in case say i run out of rifle um ammo then i switch to this until i can get some more ammo but let's get into the build right so we are running a wyvern mass now this is going to give us 10 percent skill damage for the one piece we have skill tier on here we have 10 percent skill damage we have skill haste rolled on here and then we are running a skill haste mod we definitely want to have skill damage and skill hates on this build so we can get our skills back quicker. Now I am running a Providence chest piece and this is going to give me 15% headshot damage. You can also put the new um, chest piece brand set that gives you 5% weapon damage if you don't want to use the headshot damage. This has weapon damage rolled on here so this is my one red roll. Then I have critical hit damage, critical hit chance and then I have a critical hit damage mod on here so some critical hit chance critical damage allow me to hit those crits every now and then now i am running glass cannon and all damage you deal is amplified by 25 percent all damage you deal is amplified that means that your skills so my turret my assault drone all of those will be amplified by 25 percent but you have to also remember that all damage you take is amplified by 50 percent now if i had perfect glass cannon i'd probably put that on but i don't have a good one all the ones that have have bad rolls, but if I had to get one that's a little bit better, I would like it. I would also like to have, if one of those rolls could be skill damage, I would like to have the extra skill damage rolled on there somewhere, but I am not complaining. Those rolls aren't bad for this build because you do want to be able to put out some damage, right? So for the holster, we have the Hannah Yu um, holster. This is our first piece of Hannah Yu, so we have skill haste for the um, one piece that we have. We have skill tier, skill damage, and skill haste again. Typically on the skill damage pieces, um, on the yellow pieces, on the skill tier pieces, you do want to have skill damage and skill haste if you can, except on the knee pads, and we'll talk about that in a second. 
For the backpack is our second piece of Hannah Yu. This gives us 10% skill damage. If you look, we have the skill tier, skill damage, skill haste. If I already had got one that was perfect like this, um, this is the force mod supplier. So this is the named backpack version of it. Um, I would like to be able to roll that mod right there instead of the headshot damage. I would like to have skill haste, but a hey, the headshot damage improves it being a um, offensive and a hybrid, right? So having some red rolls is good. Now, perfect combined arms shooting your enemy increases total skill damage by 30% for three seconds. So now the fact that I'm using my rifle to put out damage, I'm giving my skills 30% extra damage. And as long as I'm hitting those shots, it keeps refreshing every three seconds. Now for the gloves, we're running our third piece of hand of you. This gives us 5% weapon damage. So we're, we're getting back on that offensive and we have skill haste and skill damage. Now for the knee pads, I decided to go with the Fox Prayer knee pads. Now this is gonna give me 10% rifle damage. It, I rolled um, a one skill tier on here so I could get five skill tier plus six with the technician specialization. And then remember we have damage to targets out of cover for 8% and then we have 7% headshot damage. If somehow I was able to get some skill damage on here, I could, but I know for sure that the Fox Pair always rolls with reds, so you can only really pick what you want. But I think that's a good spot to put it right there. Now, um, for the chest piece, if you don't want to run, like I said, if you don't want to run um, the headshot damage from the Providence, you can also run the Walker and Harris, and that'll give you the 5% weapon damage. So that I'll let you guys decide which one you like to run there. But I personally like that Providence piece. I think that one just fits really good with the build itself. Now for the skills, I am running the Striker Drone. The Striker Drone is going to be 63,000 damage. Now you have to remember, this does not include the amplified damage from the chest piece or the backpack. Um, we have health on here. We have damage on here. And then we have skill haste on the drone. And then for the turret... Um, we have about the same. I think it's it's um, damage, health, and skill haste. And I'll show you these mods right now. Yes, damage, skill haste, and health. Yeah, so same thing that we have on the turret and the same thing we have on the drone. So but that's what I usually go with there. So like I told you guys, it's really up to you how you guys want to put the pieces. I just felt this was the best way to take advantage of running the technician. And the technician also gives you that 10% extra skill damage just for having that class too so there's a lot of benefits of running the technician class now i think once i get my watch max out i'll get an additional 10 percent damage there i get my skill hates up i can bump that up skill duration all of these skills never have any issue with running out and i usually have no issue running um glass cannon with this build because as long as i stay back they're usually focused on the turret or they're focused on the drone they're trying to shoot those things and by the time they have a chance to even shoot them down, we're already dropping them. And the gameplay you guys were watching was running four directives. I think the only one I wasn't running was the one that you start with no ammo. And then this was on Heroic. So this was solo, four directives, and had no issue running through this mission. So far, I'm enjoying being able to run a little bit of more damage on my builds while still being able to put out some type of damage because of a weapon like the Harmony. But that's enough of that build. Let's dive into our next build that is more skill focused versus us putting damage with our weapon. And this build right here is the build I use for farming shade levels and I use for farming just missions in general. When I'm farming and I wanna run all five directives, this is the build I'm going to use. And you guys know, if you put your directives on, you get 125%. If you put all five on, because you get 25% for each one. And that's why it's a great reason to run builds like this, because you can run all the directives, right? And then the way I have it set up is, all you have to do is pop your head out every five seconds, make sure you're getting that additional 40% skill damage, and it works hand in hand. So we'll go over the full build right now. I just wanted to show you a little bit of gameplay and let you see the numbers that are popping up on the right hand side. As you guys can see, we're hitting up to 229,000, 192,000, depending on if it's the drone or if it's my um, assault turret. Definitely a lot of high numbers, as long as I'm hitting those shots right, as long as I'm keeping perfectly in sync active. So let's get into build. So the build consists of six yellows. Yes, we're running six yellows. 
Now it's not perfect because since I am running the technician clients, I can afford to roll a blue roll. And that's what I would do. Since this is more a survivability build, just let your skills do the work. I'd rather have another blue on here be at almost 1 million armor. Now, the weapon you want to get is the Harmony. If you've been doing the Season Pass, you should at least have one of them. And the reason why you want this weapon is because it comes with a talent called Perfectly in Sync. Hitting an enemy grants 20% skill damage. Using a skill, damaging enemy grants 20% weapon damage for 5 seconds. Now, damage increases are doubled, so that means up to 40% when both are active. So if you're hitting them with your gun every 5 seconds, your turret is hitting them, you're always going to have 40% skill damage or 40% weapon damage, but we're more focused on that 40% skill damage because that's the best damage you can get in the game for any skill. So this weapon right here, the Harmony, is what you guys want to go for. It's a sexy looking little beast. You can put this little um, this little camo on it that you get. Once you complete the season pass, you'll unlock it. But yeah, this is the weapon you want right here. Let's get into the build. So for the mask, we're going to be running the hardwire mask. We're running a three-piece hardwire because we want that 15% skill haste. And then, of course, we want that 15% skill damage. So this is going to be the best place to get extra skill damage for your assault turret and your regular turret. Now, we do run the skill tier on here with 10% um, skill damage. And then we have a skill haste mod. Typically, this is what you're going to see on all the hardwire pieces. For the chest, we're running a Hannah Yu chest. This gives us 10% skill haste. We do have a two-piece, so we're going to have 10% skill damage also. We do have skill tier one on here. We have skill haste. We have skill damage, and then we do have a headshot damage. If I would have got this perfectly rolled, I would have liked to re-roll that headshot damage for skill haste, but the headshot damage does not bother me. Now, the talent you want to get is Kinetic Momentum, and the reason why is because when in combat, each skill generates a stack while active or not on cooldown. So stacks increase your total skill damage by 1% and a total skill repair by 2%, up to 15 stacks. That means you can have up to 15% extra damage for just being in combat, and this generates pretty fast. So you're going to be in combat, say if you're doing a mission, that you have constant um, enemies or of course if you're doing a control point you're going to have this at full stack so getting that extra 15 percent skill damage is what really improves this build now you could run something like glass cannon but remember i want survivability so i don't want something that's going to give me more da incoming damage and i really don't want to have i just want to stay in cover so having this being able to stay in cover if i need to pop out i don't have to worry about getting my head shot off because i'm running glass cannon now for the holster, we're running, this is our second piece of hardwire. We have skill tier on here, and then we roll 10% skill damage. So like I said, you want to roll skill damage first, and the mod skill haste. Now for our knee pads, we are running one skill tier and skill damage again, just like you saw with the holster. So this is our third piece that's going to give us that 15% skill damage. Now we're going to get into the gloves. So the gloves are... The second piece of Hannah Yu, which gives us that 10% skill damage. So we have skill haste on here and skill damage, plus we have one skill tier. Like I mentioned at the very beginning, if in any of these pieces you could have god rolls, at least have one blue roll of armor maxed out, and that would be ideally what I would want. Now for the backpack, to give us more skill damage, we want wyvern wear because one piece gives us 10% skill damage. We have skill tier on here, we have skill haste, we rolled skill damage on there, and then we put a skill haste mod. Now the talent tech support is great for staying in cover. Skill kills increase total skill damage by 25% for 20 seconds. So we're already getting 25% for the backpack, 15% for the chest piece, and we just have to stay in cover, really. There's nothing we have to proc. We don't have to keep shooting um, enemies. Combined arms gives you 30%. Um, skill damage, but you get that for three seconds and you have to consistently shoot so this one we can stay in cover pop our head shoot pop our head shoot And that's why I went with this. This is called the lazy boy You know, we just stay in cover we pop our head to get perfectly in sync active But that's all we're really doing right here. This gun right here with this build is amazing now for my secondary I went with the sweet dreams and the sweet dream is really just for the melee attacks instantly kill non-elite enemies So if you get any of those purple or red enemies rushing you just swap to it and then you melee them and you can continue fighting. For the pistol, you want to run the tactician pistol that comes with it because it comes with perfect spikes. And if you're running five directives, a lot of times you might not have bullets, but you always have pistol ammo. Headshots grant 25% skill damage. So in the meantime, while you don't have any ammo, say if you're running the five directives and you haven't got any primary ammo, well, use your pistol. That's going to give you that extra um, skill damage. Once you get a couple kills, you'll see the ammo drop because you're using your pistol. Go pick up the ammo, and then you can switch to the Harmony. Now, 
For the skills, I do run the turret, which is, has a 12 second cooldown. It has 124,000 base damage without anything being proc, without the backpack talent, without the chest talent, and we're not even using the extra 40% from perfectly in sync. So with those all procs, you can see the high numbers that we were hitting, and I'll show you some more gameplay in just a second. So remember, assault turret you wanna go with, great thing about it too, low cooldown time, so when you are using the five directives, it works. The way I have this modded is I run health, skill, haste, and damage. Those are the three mods that you see that I run on this turret right here. For my assault turret, it's a 13 second cooldown, 77,000 damage. I do have a duration mod on here. I have a health mod on here, and then I also have a damage mod on here. So almost the same thing you see on the regular turret. When we look at the stats, you're just gonna see the total skill haste is 89%, which could definitely improve. And then um, I do have my watch maxed out on skill damage on there and the skill haste is um, almost maxed out. So this is the build right here. Three piece hardwire, two piece Hannah U, one piece Wyvern. We're running tech support, kinetic momentum, and then we have perfectly in sync. Everything works hand in hand and it's a really good build. I love calling it the lazy boy because that's what it is. You just let your skills do the work. You sit back and you gain that XP. And one thing you should remember is you don't even have to shoot the enemy if you don't want to. I'm just shooting because I want the extra 40% skill damage. And that's going to allow my turret, allow my assault drone to destroy the enemy a lot quicker. So if I can get perfectly in seek active, it improves the amount of damage, right? The amount of damage that I'm putting out. And those numbers are just great to see. Just It's great to see how fast these enemies go down. Just look at look how fast these enemies get melted. When both of my skills shoot a gold enemy, that's more DPS than when you're running a rifle build, right? Because you got a lot of damage going off right there. And it's, it's great because you don't have to worry about getting shot. The enemies are focusing the skills and you're just picking and choosing who you shoot at. So you'll never really be in danger as long as you don't stick your head out too long and you just pop shot, right? And that's why this build is so safe to play. And it's a lot safer to play than running something like Glass Cannon where you do have to stick your head out. Now some of you guys might want to get Glass Cannon going. Hey, if that's how you like running your skill builds and you want to be a little bit more aggressive, I do that every now and then too. But when I want to sit back, eat some popcorn, let my skills do the work, get loot, get shade levels, and um, keep farming, this is the build I go to. It's pretty much the build you can run in group or solo play and run all the directives, and that's what's great about it. I wanna know what your favorite skill build is to use when you wanna be lazy. How do you set it up? Let me know in the comment section. Let me know what you would put different on this build. I personally like this build because it's minimum effort, a lot of damage, so it makes getting through content really fast. So, this is the build. Let me know how you would change it. What's your favorite skill build to use when you're farming and running five directives? I feel like this is the best way to run five directives running these five skills, solo group play. It's an easy, easy, easy build to run. And I think it's the best skill build in the game right now for farming. I'm gonna wrap up this video here, guys. Thank you guys again for all the support. If you're new, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, turn that notification bell on so when I release a video, you guys get notified. But until the next Division Two video, Detected. nothing but skills is out. Control.